This is Brad Smith, and he's going to be speaking about stealing from God. Brad? Thank you, sir. I, can everybody hear me? I'm, I tend to yell a little bit and get a little hot and stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about this. I love this subject. I could, oh my gosh, I would pay everything to come out to anywhere and talk to people about this. It will change the way you look at stuff. If I can affect just one of you to come through and develop in biomimicry, I've done my job, y'all. So this is me. Oh, yeah, 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 who cares? Uh, this is me. So pick out the symbol you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm on staff at Black Hat. Some of you remember from there. Tour camp, remember tour camp? I'm the nurse at tour camp. Everybody goes, you're a nurse? Do you know about computers? Like, no, I don't know a thing. That dark tangent showed up and started, never mind. So yeah, that's who I am, who cares? Uh, I need to know who you are. I could stand here for 40 minutes and babble about shit that didn't apply to anybody in this whole room. I've seen that. You've been in those presentations, haven't you? Who has biological backgrounds? I mean, not weapons. Cool. Anybody? Chemistry? Okay, the more you know about biology, the easier it is to work with this stuff. But you don't need to know anything. You can steal it easily. Any researchers in here? A lot of times. Huh? All right, cool. This is the good thing. Okay, I'm going to turn this question around. Who knows biomimicry? Where's my biomimicry people? Look at this. Yeah. I mean, so one person, you're great. The rest of you, this will be totally new to you. And do you know Neo, North, no, not that guy, Northeastern Ohio Biomimicry Group is based here in Cincinnati, and they are a dominant group in the field? They're dominant. After I leave, go back to Montana, where the Biomimicry Institute is. There's people locally who can help you develop biomimicry, software, hardware. I'm going to show you how to write the best viruses ever known to mankind. It makes a lot of my, Anton gets real nervous when I talk about this in public. I'm going to show you how to make the next million dollar idea. Nobody's made it. What is wrong? Like paper clips. It's been there. Nobody ever did it. Why, why is that? I want you to basically turn around. Well, you're going to have to go this way introduce yourself to the person behind you, because you're sitting next to the person you already know. Because you're going to be in these rooms for the next two days, sweating, talking and eating. Take a minute, turn around to the person in front of you or behind you, and introduce them by your first name. Not going any further. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so fulfilled now. See, now, as you sit next to these people, you're saying, I don't remember your name anyway, but I remember you were at not a con. All right. Uh, so, biomimicry is Greek for life, imitation of life. Been around a long time. So, biomimicry has also inspired all of these. Biomimetrics, biogenosis, biomimicry, bionic creativity. It's all stolen from God. It's basically the way nature does things. Okay, I just use God in the title just to, just to get in. So, but you can do these. These are the people I really like. Otto Schmidt. God, I want a beard like that. He's the one that actually came up with the term and first started stealing from these. Buckminster Fuller. Who knows Buckminster Fuller? Tell me who, what did he invent? What's the one? Geodesic dome. And those here with Tor Camp, we watched them all blow away. It was really pretty cool. Nauticon's geodesic dome stood up. All the sponsors blew away. The videos, if you have not seen those, of the dust devil swooping stuff up, it was wondrous. Toxic, but wondrous. And that's why I said, hey, I'm going to go out and speak at Nauticon because they can build a geodesic dome. They know Buckminster Fuller. I was so proud of them. Uh, this is Buckminster Fuller, by the way. And this is my mentor, Shanine Benrush. She codified the field, turned it into a science, has totally redone everything in the field. This book, if you want one book to read, Innovations Inspired by Nature, it will basically change. Do you know Ted, you know the TED Talks? Go look at her at TED. I love this woman. She didn't even get through all 45 minutes and they gave her more time because the stuff was so fascinating. I, I just love her. 
Hallmarks of biomimicry, nature as a model. Okay, you hunters, does this look familiar to you? I mean, this is gecko. You know, <laughs> anybody using gecko tape? Anybody heard of gecko tape? Yes, one gaffer in the back. Gecko tape is built on the principle of the gecko's feet. It'll hold everything down, you can pull it right back up. Just like gecko. Go to like Lowe's or somewhere, order it off the internet, put down gecko tape. It is the best. Nature has measured 3.8 billion years of research. Okay, so how fit are you to survive? How fit? Sometimes they don't. But if I'm gonna work with a company and do some consulting, how long have you been in business? Uh, uh, three years. I'm gonna look for sources that have been in research 3.8 billion years. You know, they've been biting each other and eating each other that long. We can learn stuff. And that's why I'm gonna show you the really scary stuff. Nature is mentor. We do everything wrong. We just, if I, this is the bullet train. It's built on a bird's beak. These are very scary. Anybody read the super trains, the early ones, like this one back here? As they came out of the tunnel, they pushed all that air in front of them, and they had almost like a sonic boom when they come out of tunnels. Ooh, the whole train is like, ah, they scared me. What they did was then take the same shape as this, as they emerge out of the tunnel, it's slopy enough to bring the air up around it, and it doesn't even boom anymore. That's a kingfisher, by the way. This thing right here you did not see. You know this thing. This is developed by the NSA as sensors that can be dropped from airplanes or helicopters or thrown down. They really nice spiral down and then lay on the ground. And then they transmit information back by the NSA. You did not see that picture and that is not my hand. Okay? You don't know where you saw it. This is a calla lily they turned into a mixer, 60% more efficient. These are whales and they're now turbines that they're using. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? This is my favorite. You live near a lake, you know, and those barnacles and stuff down there, they stick. You ever try and pull a barnacle off or a mussel? They figured out how they work. Now they've turned it into plywood glue and it's non-toxic, it doesn't use all those chemicals. It, basically, they grow the glue, the same stuff that barnacles and mussels use. Okay, so I'm sorry, no more toxic FEMA trailers if we use this method. I love toxic. Next, this, uh, I can't remember who made it, they modeled the, this after the luminous of a butterfly wing. And most of them are doing that now. Based on sharks and waves, it waves back and forth and it creates energy under the water. You just bury them in the water, tack them down, and we have energy. From the motion of the ocean based on fish. Pretty cool. Ice axes. I, I'm from Montana, that's why I'm melting. We had two inches of snow like three days ago. So everybody goes, how's the weather in Cleveland? I go, it's terrible, it's 80 degrees, it's sunny, like oh. Sorry, it's, uh, you'll get to that. It's called local specific. What works in one area doesn't work anywhere else. So ice axes. I love ice climbing out there. So if you've ever ice climbed or done any of the picks, you go in there and they break. They, the ice picks unless you pay an outrageous amount of money. Think of woodpeckers. I mean, that's enough power to break your neck and your head. How do they do it? They figured it out. This is the next generation of ice axe right here. Yeah, right, I can afford that one only in a picture of it. Notice how it's curved and it looks just like it. And you can rock that thing all day and it doesn't break. It's built, to des it's designed and built to, just like the woodpecker is, so it doesn't break its neck from hammering that wood all the time. Don't you wish our necks was that way, from hammering our head on the wall? And, uh. Cradle to grave, we design. If I throw this table on the ground and break it all up, you know where it's gonna go. It's gonna go right here. 
and we're just recycling the same crap we threw in the landfills for the last, how long? How long? Here's what we need. We need to design from cradle to cradle. So once nature dies, you basically get recycled. They can, once nature eats you, you get pooped out. You get recycled. Everything in nature is designed cradle to cradle. I have a CPU. I would like to throw it away. Can I do that? Well, sure, but it's toxic. Fills a landfill, or I can pay Staples 10, 15 bucks to haul its carcass away. We are designing cradle to grave. If you walk away with nothing greater than design from cradle to cradle, I'm happy. Bless you, sir. Oh, notice how he did, you did it perfectly. He sneezed into an arm. Okay, I'm a nurse, and I have to stop and do this. Do you know public keyboards are 400% 400, 400 more infectious? I got it backwards. Public keyboards are 400% more infectious than public toilet seats. Think about those toilet seats. They wipe them off, they put those little things down. Think about those keyboards. Ah, well, I'm good enough. Ah, here, let me open the door. How you doing today? He did it perfectly. Okay? Don't shake my hand until I wash them, okay? <laughs> cradle to cradle. You know, it's just not for eco-freaks that live in the Rockies. Da Vinci did it. Bell, the ear. Wright Brothers is a turkey buzzard. We've been stealing this stuff forever. There's this great carpet called Entropy Carpet. You don't have a dealer here in town. I looked. You get all these different squares. You throw them all over the floor, and you scuttle them around with your feet. And that's it. It's designed like the floor of the Amazon. You, oh, look, Bob puked there. I need to get that up. You pick up the piece of carpet. You put a new one down. It's a totally random pattern. It's called entropy, based on the rainforest floor. George de Mostel. This one's worth a prize. What did he invent? This is so cool. An area no one knows. Now you see why I get hyper about this. Okay, there's a picture of it over right there. What is that? Right there. He said it first. It's Velcro. It's Velcro. He was picking burrs off his dog. And he said, you know, those stick pretty good. He invented Velcro for them. Sir, because you are. He wins a book from Betty in the Sky with Suitcase. Do you all know her? She's a podcast about pretty funny stuff. Friends of mine wrote it. Congratulations. Awesome. You will like that one, sir. It's all about how the airlines treat you and what you're not supposed to do to the stewardesses. Uh, let's see. We have all sorts of stuff based on these. OK, I was in Costco. They said, little car flyer said, our cars now have side collision thingies and stuff. They found those by watching the way locusts swarm and not run into each other. So now we have this. They watched the way fish school, they calculated it, they went to a wind farm, they moved everything out, readjusted in the wind farm, no more, no need to add anything, 10% more power. Just by repositioning the turbine based on a school of fish. Pretty cool, isn't it? Nature recycles everything. Now, I could show you all those dead things I saw, but you already saw all the dead stuff. Nature really does recycle. Nature runs on sunlight. That's it. Salt water, sunlight, a few things like that. Gosh, they don't have acids. They don't have all of these toxic things that we keep producing. Basically runs just on sunlight and salt water. Nature usually only the energy it needs. Uh, this is Vegas. Enough said. <laughs> Nature fits form to function. This is Speedo. They looked at the way a shark works. They look, you know, sharks have little, like, like feelers all over their skin so they can feel the things coming. They designed these swimsuits based on this. You know, these are the ones they tried to have banned in the Olympics. 
because they blew everybody away. They did the same thing with the Winter Olympics, but I can't show you those because they've still got, Speedo's still got them wrapped up. Look at the function of this. Oh, there's a killing machine. Beauty, just beauty. Nature taps the limits of power. Oops, yeah, I'm going the right way. Uh, let's see, where's my picture? Show me my picture. Ah, these are locusts. The power, has anybody been through a locust where they're all coming through? It's like, I'm dead. But on the other hand, nature curbs excess from within. So we don't get too big. And that's part of the problem. We exceed our limits. These are dead locusts. They all die off and you just like crunch, crunch, crunch. They're terrible to eat. Other cultures eat them, but ew, they're too chewy for me. Nature banks on diversity. I mean, after 3.8 billion years, you're gonna have some weird stuff come up and still be alive. I mean, what the? <laughs> Where did that come? And they're still alive. Nature banks on diversity. Look at all of us. We're diverse, we're all different, and yet we're all here together in a common ecosystem. Nature rewards cooperation more than it rewards competition. Think about cleaner rafts with uh, anemones. Think about, um, exactly, nature, those little birds that they call them hippopotamuses, you see it on National Geographic. All the time, nature rewards cooperation. Do we reward cooperation? <laughs> Next. Nature demands local expertise. Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu people, Sun Tzu said the same thing. Use local guides or you won't make it. Okay, I really like her. She's really nice, but if these two were in the same local environment, which one do you think would get eaten first? I go for the little dog. They'd eat the dog first. Take a, take a penguin and put it in the jungle. You got about that long. Take a tiger and put it in Antarctica. They may have that long for the polar bear gets them. Other things that have come out of this, as you approach the extremes of temperature, you go to black and white, especially cold. Think of penguins. The hotter the temperature, the longer the limbs. You think of penguins. <laughs> They're not losing their body heat. Think of camels, giraffes, evaporating that. All of this came out of this stuff. Okay, let's talk about how to. I mean, it's nice, I'll show you all these pictures, but I want you to be able to take your products, what you're working on, and look at it from a biomimicry point of view. Identify the function. What, what do I want? What part of nature does the same thing? What part of nature does not do that function? And you gotta really look at what works and what doesn't work. And what will work here in, my, in your local environment? I am not working in the local environment. It is too hot here. We'll go to a conference, it'll be 30 degrees outside, the California's all like, ah! It's like, this is great. Local environment. Let's do this from a car. One of my friends says, if you want a good idea, steal it from the Germans. If you want a great idea, steal it from God. So I said, well, I have an idea stolen from Mercedes, who stole from God. So I thought, sure, that's cool. Mercedes wanted to build a new car. They wanted fuel efficient, they wanted to be able to carry stuff. So they said, okay, let's look around in nature. What has the highest carrying capacity with the lowest drag coefficient? And it was, of course, the boxfish. Here it is, the humble boxfish. You know them, seen them all. Here's its drag coefficient. Coming this way, look how gorgeous this is. This is an amazing drag coefficient picture. What'd they make from it? A Mercedes. There it is. Built on a box fish. Great fuel economy, great mileage, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit better than those little Skoda or those little box cars they make. This looks like a Mercedes, doesn't it? Design brief. So you, when you're working on your stuff, optimize rather than maximize. Nature does not run at 100%. You don't, I don't. We always need reserves. The classic story of the gentleman, his, they wanted 100% efficiency in the factory. He got his section to 100% and they laid off his people. 
because the rest of the factory is working at 60 to 70 percent. And all of a sudden, his stuff piled all up, and he was just blocking the whole chain. You can't work at 100 percent, they said. Besides, they fired his staff, and then they cut him back, so everybody had to work harder, so they couldn't meet their production goals. Reserve room for, like, all of a sudden, I'm walking along and there's a dinosaur. I need to maximize my self, and that's when we save that energy. Locally attuned and responsive, we talked about that. Uh, let's see, built-in resilience. Okay, think about this for a minute. We, our network design is stupider than a blade of grass. Hey, I have an IP address. Denial of service, denial of service. Hey, I'm just going to stand there and be beat on. Think about a blade of grass when the wind comes. It's like, oh, I'm fluttering in the wind and stuff. And then it stands back up. Why, why don't we, when we get an attack, why don't we shift that to another IP address, put in the equivalence of white blood cells, killer T cells, and say, okay, so buddy, you want to play denial of service, let's. And he's still working because his IP address automatically been shifted over by the DHCP to a safe new address, and the killer mob comes in to get the person on the other side. Now, that's called the reactive firewall, and they're illegal right now. Do unto others, we call it the golden rule firewall, and it works. Why do we just, I mean, we're not even, a network's as smart as a blade of grass. Why? Why? I don't know. Leverage interdependence, recycle, integrate cyclic processes. That's how you get cradle to cradle. Not, I break this chair and we take it to the dumpster. Cradle to cradle. Use benign manufacturing. I come from Montana where we have a lot of gold mining. Butte, Montana, you know, Beavis and Butthead Butte, or Butte as they say. Largest Superfund toxic site in the country. They mine gold with all sorts of acid. It broke through to the water. They are still boiling the water in Butte, Montana. Nice place. What does this mean to you? I mean, oh yeah, the pictures are nice. And you're like, okay, how do I apply this to what I do every day? University of Arizona got a million dollars for firewall research and designing networks defense based on the human body. 3.8 million years of eating each other. Nature has some really cool defense. I mean, squirting blood out of your eyes? Who thought of that? That's a toad. Wow, that toxic toad, do they sell those here? I mean, you lick the toad, huh? I mean, there's a great defense. Imagine if we we're all toxic and well, we'd probably be licking each other. Never mind. So, use these things on your network. Use these. And there's a whole new group of threats based on nature. And I'm going to talk about those right now. Real viruses are unstoppable. That crap we call viruses, get it off my plate. Oh, I have to click here, and then you run down the code. Hey, I'm more than a pretty face. I have the offensive security pen testing course that just kicked my ass. If you have not done the Backtrack Offensive Security class, yeah, you all know Backtrack probably. Their training for it is wondrous. All right, here's the way real viruses work. Viruses are dead. They are, they're dead. Okay? They only contain part. Your body sees them as dead, they let them float around. Sort of like an encrypted short TTL package. Goes right through the firewall. Have a nice day. Then it implants itself into the cell, uses this really cool drill thing, which is pretty cool. Uses the, the uh, whoever they're attacking, their, their energy, their cells, their DNA, they use everything. So once I get that short encrypted TTL package through your firewall, uh, why do we still have compilers on most of our, I mean, my backtrack, some of the other stuff, I keep the compiler. How many Windows people do you think use their compiler that's still built in there? I'm going to say minus one, maybe. I mean, nobody uses it. Why is it still there? So once I get it into your hard drive, it's encrypted. I start stealing your IP addresses, your cycles, everything. Once this is done and the assembly is complete, two to 4,000 virus per cell are released. 
Can we cure AIDS? Can we cure the flu? Can we cure the cold? Can we cure hepatitis? And that crap we call viruses is so human. Think about those short TTL encrypted packages and then in the inside, use their compilers, use their hard drive, hey, even scan over and pick up all their IP addresses. So when you break out of that machine, you are the network. God, I see some faces like, oh, they understand it. Oh, I am so sorry. Uh, here it is. Let's talk about hardware. I talked about this last night in a pre-session. I saw these people's faces were like, what? The nerves move 230 to 250 miles an hour in our bodies because they don't go through the wires. They actually use plexuses and things like this. Let's take a look at these. I call it the cat superconductor. If you know anything about high temperature superconductors, I know it's an oxymoron, they actually use this same method. Here is your nerve. It jumps from the myelin node to the myelin node. It doesn't go through the wire, through the axon. It actually leaps on the outside. Remember that French or physicist who was measuring the speed of muscle jumps in a frog? What was that? eighth grade biology or something like that. It's like, how can they measure the speed of a jumping frog nerve? And he found out that it was moving too fast to be actually transmitting through the cable, like we do. Oh look, we just go along the cable, we may hit a router repeater to make our signal stronger and then we just go along more through the cable. It's not the way nature does it. Nature jumps from myelon to myelon to myelon, which is so much faster going, <laughs> Why hasn't somebody built a wire like this for our use? All the superconductor, high temperature superconductor cables are built like this. They can run superconductor wire multiple miles now. If anybody's been to Dubai, well, I don't know if it stopped yet. They were running the largest superconductor, high temperature superconductor wiring in the world based on this. You want to make money? Make me a myelinated cat cable of some type that leaps from node to node. Hey, we'll even call it after you. Hey, it's a, it's a bob wire. It's an Alice wire. Well, you know, Alice wires, they jump from node to node. Do we have anything like this? No. So one, I showed you how to write a super virus, just like <clears throat> use their compiler. Two, I showed you how to make a million dollars already. Develop this wire not just for high temperature superconductors, okay? You know, this all sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? it? Really does, sounds too good to be true. Nature is about life and death. I will eat you and I will live. That is what nature is about. We hopefully have grown beyond that, so there's a big problem. My favorite is nature had 3.8 billion years to do this. My boss wants it tomorrow. Okay, well that's really nice. I don't have billions to wait around, dollars or years. So that's another problem. We do things nature doesn't, and at that point I just move on because the audience usually gets in this arguing match. Well, we have the best technology, and then other people say, yeah, we're polluting the earth and we're killing and all of this. It's like, we do things nature does. Now, you take that as it's good or bad, okay? We'll do better someday, maybe. But we all must be aware of biomimicry. How can we make our projects, our software, more like nature does, less like we are? Things to take home. I've left time here at the end so we can like, Talk about some projects. Normally, I do a workshop after this, but I, I just wanted you to get this concept. What do I want you to take home from this? It's pretty interesting. Biomimicry is huge. It's huge all over the world. But it's just now coming into the IT field. You want to make money? Develop the firewall. 
that automatically ties into your DHCP, your DNS, takes that IP address away from the attacker, gives it and then sends in the equivalent to white or red blood cells. Is there anything out there like that right now? No, it's in his body, in his body, in her body, in his body. But we don't have anything we've stolen like that. Make a firewall that ties everything together. Get involved locally. I'm going to be here a couple days. Uh, okay, do you think I will stop in the hallway and talk excessively about biomimicry? Yeah. Stop me and we'll talk about these things. Involved in a lot of projects. So I'm pretty comfortable with this philosophy. I want you to go out and search biomimicry. Uh, in the handout, there's my biomimicry page, and we've got all sorts of links to that. But that's not who you need to go to. You need to work locally, just like one of the hallmarks of biomimicry. Here's where you need to go. Biomimicry, northeastohio.org, north, northeast. Local, right here in Cincinnati, or Cleveland. <laughs> Cincinnati rocks, man. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. Um, they are right here in Cleveland, Cuyahoga Fall River. Some people heard me talk about that one. Remember, I saw it burn. I'm a graduate of Ohio State. It was burning. It's like the river is burning. Yeah. The local biomimicry group, you know, it's steel mine, not the group, the, the river down there, Cuyahoga River. So that don't bump into it and destroy it. Well, also, nothing will grow on the edge of that steel that fish will eat. So they found these, they had these bags made. They're stuffed full of water, aquatic plants. The fish now go from bag hanging on the steel thing to bag hanging on the steel thing to bag. You actually have fish in the Cuyahoga River. How did I know they were there? There were ducks on the river. Ducks don't settle unless there's food. There are ducks on the Cuyahoga River now. This is your backyard. You can help. Think about biomimicry in the IT field. We've applied a total of zero to this field. The rest of the design field is leaving us behind. And that's why we still produce toxic stuff that they have to throw in the dump and it's overflowing. Here's where you can get. Please take a minute and read this one. Imagine if you ran your business like the Great Plains. They never need receding, they take care of themselves, or like a giant redwood forest. You wouldn't have to be shutting down people or parts of the plant. We are approaching it totally backwards. You know what is really proud, one the reason I decided to come out here? Maker bots. I saw the maker bots at Torquil. When we make something traditionally now, we get a big chunk of something and we skinny it all down until we get what we want. We take a whole tree and we make toothpicks out of it. Nature does it the other way, like a maker bot, where it is built from the bottom up and you only use the resources and the energy you need. Not like, let's get a big thing and chop it all down. And it's very interesting, after talking to a bunch of the MakerBot people, they're like, yeah, it's like, do you know this is biomimicry? And they're like, Ugh. Our field and you all are smart enough to engage biomimicry without ever hearing it. Now that you know about biomimicry, take this knowledge out. Think about it. You know those bugs and stuff? Take a look at those. If you need, if you have a block, oh, I've got a project, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, I've got to get this project in. Go for a walk. I mean, don't, not in the city, go outside and like nature and look at trees. How does nature solve the same problems you are? I have a project, it's in, uh, I need to expand my network. This is one of my favorite ones. Tokyo Rail System wanted to expand. Your network, say you need to expand. They took a glob of food, they put it right in the middle, 
of where the main Tokyo station was. They then appropriate or you know, erasured all the other stops with little bits of food. They took a one cell green slime, yeah, a computer, supercomputer, and the regular design staff. They put that one cell green slime on the central station and it started growing. Do you know its design that the one cell and the supercomputer matched? Do you know the crap we built was way off? One celled organisms. You want to expand your network. You want to upgrade the sonnet. Put a glob of food, ratio out where you want everything to go, put the one cell in it and walk away and come back in seven days. It's design. You should see the pictures of this. It grows out, it's like, oh no, that's too far, I've got to come back this way, and it grows over here, and then it comes over this way, it's like, oh no, I... It was wonderful to watch. The biggest thing about all of this is I want you to think about how nature would do it, how efficiently nature would do it. I want you to contact your biomimicry group here in town. I don't want toxic landfills. I want cradle to cradle. Please think of that. Ask me any question in the world now, please. Oh, come on, I'm not that good. Ask me stuff. You always have a question. <laughs> Whoa, there's a oh my god. I'm here for several days. I'll probably be at tour camp. I'm at Hacker Halted, I'm a staff at Black Hat, why do you know that already? DEF CON, I'm the drunken pile in the corner, just sort of kick me and give me a beer. So, uh, if you want to learn more about biomimicry, please feel free to get a hold of me or your local group and stop me in the hallway, ask me any questions about it. One more chance, ask me questions about biomimicry. Is this useful? Do you see how you can, yeah. And it's really cool because the guy who knew about it won the book. What more could I ask for? I want to thank everybody for attending. If you have any questions, stop me in the hallway, but prepare to. Okay. And uh, thanks for having me out here, all of you. Thank you. Wow.